Here's the problem state. With no code tool, it's built on day one, deploy on day one. A mad integration. I tape it to Slack. How long did it take you to create this entire thing? 40 minutes. That's freaking insane. Prompt engineering. <laughs> Prompt engineering. <laughs> go to YouTube or would you say go to Reddit? So I'm going to show how you do it. Awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Builder Central. Today, I'm joined by a very, very special guest. I'm Sachin. I'm the revenue guy. So as the revenue guy, I can understand that you're taking care of sales, you're taking care of marketing, and you're taking care of operations. And now you have to make sure that all of these are aligned. Now, the question that I have for you is, what would a revenue guy do without the access of no code tools? It will be like mayhem, I would say. Like, it will be very chaotic. If you don't have tools aligned, processes aligned, then actually you lose revenue in real terms. So that's how being the revenue guy and having old or no code tools and processes helps. I understand. And how long did it take you to realize that there was this gap? Usually the first instinct is go for whatever is best in the market, right? The best enterprise tool that's all for you, okay. right? right? Those tools come in way, no code tools don't come in your way. With no code tool, it gives you the flexibility to sort of build on day one, deploy on day one, mm. and keep evolving your process over time. So it's a lot more efficient. How much research and development did you do in order to find the right tool for the right context? First, you need to sort of know the entire landscape of the tools. Mm -hmm. Let's say in a context of a problem wherein you're trying to solve with no code, you need to know the entire spectrum. Mm -hmm. Something very extensible, which helps you build enterprise tools. Something which is very easy to use out of the box, right? And then second thing is how much of a DIY muscle you have, actually, right? Like with the whole idea of having no code tools in your processes is that having shorter feedback loops, being able to do it yourself, sort of deploying it fast. So if you don't have that uh, sort of attitude to do it yourself, it's, it's very hard to get it right, right? Okay. Third is the learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. Learning curve in the sense that if you have an immediate problem, right? And if you're trying to solve with something like Bubble, you can build enterprise level apps almost with Bubble, right? Then the learning curves will come your way, right? So knowing these two, three things sort of helps getting at the core of the problem faster, picking something that can solve for your problems right now and it's also extensible. Is there any enterprise grade tools right now that are not functioning to the capacity in order to provide the output that you're looking for? Doing things yourself, you would never know whatever you're doing works. And it takes a while to figure it out whether you, the money that you have spent, is it moving the needle? For the people, for, for the audience that is watching, is what were your resources to learn no code? Again, do it yourself. <laughs> Just go on the internet, search, see what is trending. Okay. Just go get a trial, okay, work then, it out. What community would you say is better for learning? Would you say go to YouTube or would you say go to Reddit or would you say go to Twitter? Sort of articulate your problem in a sentence, right? Like sort of build an elevator pitch for your problem, do a Google search or do it, uh, do that search on YouTube. And I, I'm quite sure someone will have a tutorial on it. Yeah, it's just being able to articulate your problem in concise ways so that these platforms can help you. Prompt right? engineering. <laughs> Prompt engineering. <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, Sachin, so uh, we've been walking the talk about no code, but now let's see if you can walk the walk, okay? Mm. So here's the problem statement. Okay. So with that problem statement, I would like for you to come up with a no code solution so that our audience knows that no code is actually valid. I'll try to break it down in a way and sort of demonstrate via Airtable. First, the tool should solve for your problem immediately, it should be cost effective and should be extensible. Right. So, uh, as you pointed out, we are taking an example of a talent agency which has like uh, two types of customers. Mm -hmm. One is companies who's sort of making these requests so that the agency can help them hire talent. And the second side is the talent uh, which this agency manages and they are the matchmakers. Awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. So, we will sort of start with schema. So first what we are going to do is we are going to get the schema right. So this is what I have come up with in the context of this talent agency. This agency has companies and talent, right? Like so companies have hiring requests and talent uh, has a bunch of requirements and wants to get matched to these companies, right? So to begin with, I'm going to create the schema here. In Airtable, you sort of define it on a field level, right? So I have defined this to be a single select field. This is a number field. Uh, this is an email field. Right, and there are a bunch of other things that make uh, Airtable really powerful, which is relational database. I am going to sort of uh, put in some dummy data into this. So I'm going to take a help of ChatGPT here. So what I'll do is I am going to just take the schema and ask for like dummy data from ChatGPT. So yeah, let's let's get to getting this data in our uh, ed. Okay, so I have got this data, um, dummy data in my schema. Let's see how Airtable 
uh, it's a relational database so what i'm going to do is uh, out of the companies that i have I, i can just capture those companies i can assign these requests to a particular user so let me just make this field a user for now default user let's see the current user is the default user right if you have a immediate problem right and if you're trying to solve with something like bubble you can build enterprise level apps almost with bubble right then the learning curves will come your way right so knowing these two can directly connect your table to another table just by doing this it's just a matter of picking data from another uh, table right within your piece it's as simple as that so this makes this really really a powerful feature now what we are going to do is given that we have the schema uh, usually people would say that this exactly looks like uh, sheets hmm. so why solve it with uh, air table right <laughs> it looks exactly like that yeah so what we can actually do is we sort of can build interfaces on top of this so that it's lot easier to sort of work on this data hmm. it's lot easier to sort of share access to this data with other teams which are involved in the processes right we'll start with interfaces and it's just simple drag and drop okay so what we're going to do is we're going to build a, a interface let me just call this a talent interface cool right let me just give this as a cool logo and we'll move so you don't have to do much to be on like all the possible interfaces are by default present here you don't have to do much you just have to pick how you want your data to look like right and then you have to pick which is the database on top of which you want to build this interface in this instance of which table right you can directly put filters on top of your data you can group your data you can sort your data you can search your data you can do all of these things. what i'm going to do is like once i click on a particular row in the data i want to see all the related details of that data right so it's not that hard what we are going to do is we are going to create an interface which opens on top of this what i have done is i have gone on to just create these separate layouts as well when you click on the data you want to see everything about that row right so you can capture all of that you can also see the dependencies right how this data is linked to the requirements table and then you can just click and also see that how this requirement uh is laid out here right now in this ui this field is not edited right but your team comes in and says that at times customers put in their wrong email ids once you get on call with them right now you want to be able to change this fast you don't want to go to a customer success team in no code solutions is far more easier for you to do things yourself rather than relying on customer success team right so in this case as i wanted to make this data editable i just click and this data is edited right so we have built just one interface right now on top of one table right what i want to do is i want to be able to tell my teams how to prioritize this data on a day to day basis right the best thing to do in this case is to sort of give my team a kanban board something like this so this is as again just click voila i you just built a ui just by clicking right and it's insane uh, of course you can go further and you know just sort of make the way you want things to be but i just want to demonstrate that just in few clicks you are able to build interfaces how crazy is that cool so now we have the interface we have the schema ready these things look sorted right yeah, but we can actually go like crazier on this right we have stakeholders as well they won't open your software and every day and they are likely to ask you verbally what is the status right so you can actually solve it Uh, inevitable using automations wherein if something happens in the interface you can update your stakeholders on slack or on awesome. email so i'm going to show how you do it cool that's a mad integration enable to slack yep what yep. what i want to demonstrate now how you can actually sort of also build automations automations basically like when when something happens what you want to do post right uh, whenever there's a requirement which is closed right Uh, it means that we have fulfilled the request of the customer. I am going to inform my stakeholder that this company's request was already fulfilled. So, what I am going to do now is that whenever a request is closed, uh, I want to be able to sort of take an action on this, right? So, this is asking me to choose a record because I don't have any data which has a request uh, status closed. So, let me put this closed so that I have a data to test on. this sort of mission right so let's me choose the record it found that record now what i want to do is i just want to simply send an email to whom this 
should go you can actually also make it dynamic based on this data but i let's assume that i am the stakeholder and i need to be posted whenever this happens so i have connected my gmail account this is the stakeholder that i want to update once a request is closed Let me dynamically pull which company's uh, requirement has been pulled. Or as we can say which type of hydro for. So this way you can actually inform uh, the stakeholder that this uh, funds. I can maybe create a space here. Let's uh, generate a preview. Generate a preview. And yeah, so this is the mail that will go to my stakeholder, and I can configure it to be a dynamic email entity as well. Once a request is fulfilled, and they can probably raise the invoice and be posted on when they have to take action, and they don't have to sort of open the database and sheets or anything uh, to take actions on this and that way you save there a lot of time and they're able to also move fast and uh, put their information might not cover there are few things that you want to do on a bulk level but you're not able to do it right you can also those do do by just writing code on top of these so i'm not going to demonstrate how to do that but what i can do is maybe i can show you that how a table as a solution is an is a very extensible solution right uh, so for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some extension and tools that you can also use in your workflows uh, to do things which are not possible out of the box. So yeah, so what I'm trying to get as the automation will do a lot of things out of the box for you, uh, but there, there are things that you might not be able to do. But here, the magic is you can actually write code within AI table to do things that you want to do, right? So there are few scripts that are already available out of the box that you can just directly use, right? Of course, I'm just using the free plan. That's why I'm not able to use this. But Airtable, Airtable has a documentation on this wherein it sort of tells you how to use these APIs to be able to do an action on this data. This is basically whatever uh, Airtable does underneath. It gives you action. So I'll just go back and recap what we have done, right? So first of all, what we did was we just tried to sort of demonstrate how to get the schema right and how Airtable basically helps different data types. So if I go back to my data, you see that I have different types of data. I can also assign it to particular users. And we also saw that what are relational database and why it makes it Airtable very powerful, right? So then we have gone, um, sort of, I tried to demonstrate that how Airtable is a lot more extensible in sheets and sheets can be so overwhelming, right? Other than this, we what we have managed sort of built an entire interface, which is like a CRM, an MVP CRM for this talent agency's problem by just clicking on it. So you can see we have built an entire interactable user interface just by a few clicks when I can take action, uh, I can sort of make these fails uh, editable and whatnot. And based on my team's feedback, I can make this an evolving solution, right? Uh, then, so what we did was whenever a hiring requirement is fulfilled, we want to notify our stakeholders that please raise the invoice. So we have just done it with simple clicks. You can just manually pull this data, personalize this and uh, keep everyone posted about things. You can also, in particular, Airtable has an integration with Slack wherein you can sort of define triggers and you can send messages on a particular channel. And for reporting, I have built a like very simple like dashboard, uh, but it was just few clicks, right? And you can also go on to build these very information rich uh, dashboards by, with few clicks, right? Uh, now moving to the next point, I just want to uh, sort of also talk about how extensible this is. And I just wanted to sort of reiterate that you can write scripts within Airtable. You can sort of uh, integrate it with different apps so that with the evolving process, uh, you are able to map your requirements, right? Uh, I hope this was helpful. So we saw the schema. 
uh, we saw the interface, we saw how we can bring in automations to sort of keep your stakeholders posted. And how long did it take you to create this entire thing? 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Awesome. That's freaking insane. Sorted, sorted. All right, Sachin, thank you so much for your time. This is a brilliant call conversation. I'm ready to go build some no code tools now. <laughs> No, no, I'm building no code tools. I'm ready to go use some no code tools now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. I think the biggest takeaway from here is that when you're looking to use a no code tool, make sure you spend enough time on the research and development to make sure that your tool is extensible, your tool is easily available, and you don't have to spend that much money on maintaining it. Now, keeping that in mind, uh, no code tools are a great option for you to become a solopreneur. That is my key takeaway from my conversation with Sachin. And speaking of solopreneurs, we've decided to create an idea to launch series and the video for that is up here. So make sure you click on this and check it out and see how we've taken just five days to take in a complete idea and turn it into a successful video directory. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss another video from us. And until then, keep building and keep following Builder Central for more.